Hi all you pack rats, this is Jeff of Talflator Mouse coming at you and this is another slug by Tim Hamilton of Ballistic Machinist. We're going to call this one the Barbell Slug because we screwed up with this other slug calling it the Dumbbell Slug and I can't get anything right, can I? Okay, this is a solid steel CNC machined slug and it weighs in at 40 grams or 1.4 ounces. It's a monster of a slug. Okay, we'll be using 40 grains of Hodgkin's long shot powder and this is how Tim loaded it, so this is how we're going to load it too. Using a double shot cup to kind of protect the barrel, we just stuffed it in the shell, put a roll bead on it and it's good to go. All right, welcome back to Outflater Mousers. Once again, we're out here on a beautiful California day. Today we're shooting some of uh, Tim from the Ballistic Machinist channel. He sent us some of these uh, barbell rounds and uh, barbell slugs. We're going to give them a try. Jeff has colored one end of them you might be able to see there so that we can watch them on the Kronos slow-mo and see if they actually tumble in the air or if they fly straight. So uh, let's give them a try. We're going to fire them here through Jeff Spinelli today. See what they'll do. And of course the jets are coming. Okay, <laughs> anytime you're ready. All right, here we go. Center of the triangle. Wow. That did have a lot of thump. That had like a three inch magnum kind of recoil. Oh, okay. Center of the triangle. So here's the back side of the uh, vest after it was hit. Did hit a little low from where I was trying to hit it. And Went right on through there. Believe it or not, there's a little hole there. You can see my fingers. Oh, so wow. Slug has passed right on through a vest. Made it through a level 3A Kevlar vest. Okay, the first shot was shot through the rifle choke. And as you can see, the slug is kind of tumbling a little bit. That was his original intention for these monster slugs to tumble through the air and cause massive ha havoc on whatever it hits. And it did. Now let's see what this thing will do to the lead plate. Anytime. It definitely hit sideways. These it hit sideways. You can see the, the two. So these aren't stable like those other the dumbbell slugs that we yeah. shot a few weeks ago. You can see it was uh, not 100% sideways. One side was just slightly leading, but that thing just bore right through. Oh my gosh. And look at that. One Almost half, went through sideways half. through the lead plate. That's something else there. Honestly, had it been uh, front to rear, it probably could have made it through there. Uh-huh. That's a lot of force. But that is a deep hole. Yeah. Right in the center, too. Right in the lead hole. So we shot that one without any, without the rifle choke, so maybe, maybe that now is a clue. It seemed to be a little more accurate. I was aiming for this smudge right here, so... Okay, we'll keep shooting it without the rifle choked. And, yeah, oh, that, that's devastating. Okay, I set up the camera to film from the barrel all the way to the target. And that sucker's just mostly just flying sideways. It's not tumbling end over end or anything. Uh, but this shot was a lot more accurate than the first shot. So shooting it without the rifle choked this time was definitely an improvement. All right, when the Pioneers first came to America, this is the uh, ballistic gel they used right here. So uh, we're going to give that a try. Or what Jeff called Russian ballistic gel. Yeah. He'll be aiming right here, in case you're wondering. Okay, I'm ready. So from a little bit of a little bit of a figure eight pattern there, we can see that it was not quite dead on, but just at a slight angle when it impacted that uh, ballistic ballistic wood. <laughs> Okay, we see a whole lot of debris, all the wadding and everything just absolutely shredded. And oddly enough, this one more or less flew nose first, stable, kind of like the dumbbell rounds that we shot a couple weeks ago. Real American-made ballistic gel here, <laughs> including the five pound gummy bear. Okay, the next two slugs, I drilled a hole in one end and we'll see if that will throw off the balance any. Anytime. Boy. Boy. So on the gummy, this was an old wound. Chin was an old wound. 
but you can see a barbell shaped hole there oh. and you might not be able to see on camera but there's a little trace of red marker there on that side so we know the red end hit there towards center mass but look at that wow look turn that, it around look at that wound you can see all the way through there oh that's ugly that, that, that. there's his exit wound okay <laughs> And then it kept on going. It flew through God knows how many of these pylons, but look at that. One end of that round barbell smacked on there and just made a dent while the other end just plowed. What if it broke or something? That's weird. We'll dig that out later sometime. Yeah. One went in light and the other one didn't. didn't go through or anything. Now I was kind of hoping that hole would cause the slug to whistle through the air. That didn't happen, of course. Nothing works as I ever planned it to do. <laughs> but, uh, the slug again flew sideways, just creating a massive wound cavity through all that gel. And there it is, being ejected out the back onto the ground. Now if you listen carefully, you could hear Greg kind of moaning in pain after each shot. Because remember, these things are 1.4 ounces traveling at over 1,500 feet per second. Just beasts. Okay, are these good for deer hunting? Let's find out. Hit it. Whoa. Got the hit. That thing did not leave much. So we think it hit the water in the ceramic, lost a lot of its power, and it seemed to deflect it up because it smacked in here, and then we found it out here on the uh, on the ground. But uh, everybody can take a look at the little hole in there that was. Oh yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem to be bent in any way. Look at it hitting sideways again. Yep, amazing. This is all that's left of Bambi. <laughs> On this shot, I turned up the Kronos high-speed camera to over 8,000 frames per second. And once again, that double wrecking ball did its number on that ceramic, beautiful piece of pottery there. Full of water, too. So we had some hydrostatic uh, effect there, too. I do hope you'll check out Tim's video. There's the card for it right there. There's also a link in the description. Be sure to check it out because his results are a little bit different than ours. And once again, I want to thank my Patreons for their support. Uh, definitely helps pay for a new lens, a new microphone from the Sony camera, and a lot of other stuff. I try to <laughs> spend that money very wisely and invest it back into the channel. Anyway, thank you guys for watching.